Okay, it all comes down to this. Now, of course, it's been two and a half years since I did a spoiler-free review of this. Now, be warned, this will have spoilers. Get ready as I bring to you a re-review of Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker. Big days, entertainment rankings and reviews. So greetings, my fellow YouTubers, and welcome to Big D's Entertainment Rankings and Reviews. My name's Duel, better known to you as the Big D, and this time around I bring to you a re-review of the 2019 epic space opera Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker, aka Star Wars Episode 9, released, or should I say distributed by Disney for Lucasfilm Limited, along with Bad Robot as this film was, once again, directed by J.J. Abrams, who helmed The Force Awakens. Abrams also produced and co-wrote the script. The third installment of the Star Wars sequel trilogy and the final episode of the Skywalker Saga. This features characters we've all seen, including Mark Hamill, Anthony Daniels, plus Ian McDiarmid and Billy D. Williams as Lando Calrissian. And despite it had been three years since her passing, Carrie Fisher's in this, but the use of some, well, footage and what have you. I think you know the story of that. Plus other characters we see in the previous films, like Anne Driver, Daisy Ridley, John Boyega, Oscar Isaac, Lupita Nyong'o, Donald Gleason, and... And Kelly Marie Tran. Plus Juna Suotamo, once again, does Chewbacca. Plus we have Richard E. Grant, Naomi Aki, and Carrie Russell. Now this falls Ray, Finn, and Poe as they lead the Resistance's final stand against Supreme Leader Kylo Ren and the First Order, who are aided by the return of the deceased Galactic Emperor, Palpatine. Before I go into this, if you have not seen... My re-reviews my re of the other eight films, plus the anthology films of Rogue One and Solo, I advise you to click on the card and go to the playlist to check that out. Now, as I mentioned in the beginning, I did do a spoiler-free review of this two and a half years ago when this film was released for 2019 was over with. So, this will have spoilers, so but I'll begin to that in a little bit, Okay. Okay, now I do it. Now, on with the story. Following a threat of revenge by the resurrected Emperor Palpatine, Kylo Ren obtains a Sith Wayfinder that leads to the planet Exegol. There he finds Palpatine, who reveals that he created Snoke to rule the First Order and lure Kylo to the dark side. Palpatine unveils the Final Order a secret armada of super laser-equipped Star Destroyers, and tells Kylo to find and kill Rey, who is continuing her Jedi training under Resistance leader Leia Organa. Poe Dameron and Finn deliver intelligence from a spy that Palpatine is on Exegol. Rey reads in Luke Skywalker's notes that a Sith Wayfinder can lead them there. Rey, Finn, Poe, Chewbacca, BB-8, and C-3PO depart in the Millennium Falcon to Pasana to find a clue leading to a Wayfinder. Kylo initiates a force bond with Rey to discover her location. He travels to Pasana with his warrior subordinates, the Knights of Ren. With Lando Calrissian's help, Rey and her friends find a clue, a dagger inscribed with Sith text, which C-3PO's programming forbids him from interpreting and the remains of a Jedi hunter named Ochi and his ship. Rey senses Kylo nearby and faces him. The First Order capture the Falcon, Chewie, and the Dagger. Attempting to save Chewie, Rey accidentally destroys a First Order transport with Force Lightning. Believing Chewie is dead, the group escape on Ochi's ship. They travel to Kajimi, where a droid smith extracts the Sith text from 3PO's memory, revealing coordinates to a Wayfinder. 
Ray senses Chewie is alive, and the group mount a rescue mission to Kylo's Star Destroyer. Ray recovers the dagger and has visions of Ochi killing her parent. Kylo informs her that she is Palpatine's granddaughter. Palpatine had ordered Ochi to recover the young Rey, but her parents hit her on Jakku. General Hux saves Poe, Finn, and Chewie from execution, revealing himself as the spy. After allowing the group to escape, Hux is discovered and executed by a legion General Pride. And the group fly the Falcon to the Wayfinder's coordinates on a moon in the Endor system. Alright, now for the ending to this here finale. As always, you know the procedure. You have five seconds to stop this video. Go to the description box below and fast forward to the time below to avoid the spoilers at the ending. If you've seen the movie already, please continue on. Here we go. Okay, you've been warned. Ray retrieves the Wayfinder from the crashed second Death Star, but she is met by Kylo, who f destroys the Wayfinder and duels her. In a dying act, Leia calls to Kylo through the Force, distracting him as Ray impales him. Sensing Leia's death, Ray is overcome by guilt. She heals Kylo and takes his TIE Fighter to exile herself on Act 2. There, Luke's Force Spirit encourages Rey to face Palpatine and gives her Leia's lightsaber. Rey leaves for Exegol in Luke's X-Wing fighter, using the Wayfinder from Kylo's ship. Meanwhile, Kylo converses with a memory of his father, Han Solo. He throws away his lightsaber and reclaims his identity as Ben Solo. Since in Leia's death and Ben's redemption, Palpatine sends a Star Destroyer to destroy Kajimi as a show of force. Ray transmits her coordinates to R2-D2, allowing the Resistance, now led by Poe and Finn, to follow her to Exegol. There she confronts Palpatine. He demands she kill him to allow his spirit to pass into her. The Resistance launch an attack on the Star Destroyers, and Lando arrives with reinforcements from across the galaxy. Ben overpowers the Knights of Ren and joins Rey, but Palpatine drains their power to rejuvenate himself. He incapacitates Ben and attacks the Resistance fleet with Force Lightning. Weakened, Rey hears the voices of past Jedi who give her strength. Palpatine attacks her with lightning, but Rey deflects it using both Luke and Leia's lightsabers, killing Palpatine before dying herself. Ben uses the Force to revive Rey, and they kiss before he dies. The Resistance defeats Palpatine's remaining forces, while people across the galaxy rise up against the First Order. The Resistance celebrate their victory, and Rey visits Luke's abandoned homestead on tattooing and buries Luke and Leia's lightsabers. And in the end, a passerby asks her name. Seeing Luke and Leia's four spirits nearby, she responds, Rey Skywalker. End of story. So what did I think of Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker? Well, I will say it's, it's good and what have you. But... I can understand why it got the mixed response, unlike the last two films. And although it was the lowest gross in some of the trilogy, it did, however, make a billion worldwide, but and make it and becoming the seventh highest grossing film of 2019. Oh well. Anyway, I do like the acting we got from everyone. See, um, now for Carrie Fisher, who died in late 2016, appears through the use of repurposed, unreleased footage from The Force Awakens as a result of her death. She was not present in most of the film's marketing materials or merchandise. Mark Hamill returns as Luke, who became one with The Force. Yes, it wasn't too bad. Am Driver was very good. Uh, in playing Kyle Ren again, and Daisy Ridley as Ray was very good as well. John Boyega, once again, good as Finn, and so was Oscar Isaac as Poe. Let's see, Naomi Aki as 
Janna, a former stormtrooper like Finn was. Donald Gleason returns as General Hugs. Richard E. Grant plays Allegiant General Pride, and Lupia Nyong'o plays Maz Kanata. Let's see. And Juno Suotamo once again does Chewbacca. Kelly Marie Tram returns as Rose. Plus, Ian McDiarmid returns as Emperor Palpatine, and Billy D. Williams returns as Lando Calrissian. So anyway, that's really good. We have Anthony Daniels back at 3PO. And well, everyone was good. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention Kerry Russell plays Zori Bliss, an old acquaintance of Poe's from Kajimi. Yes. Now the action sequences were very good. So was the score, once again, done by John Williams. And the visual effects were good too. Unfortunately, critics were a little hard on the story. The pacing, well, the pacing was a little, had did have some issues in my opinion. And perceived departures from the plot and themes of The Last Jedi. But hey, I'm an understanding person, but nevertheless, I still enjoyed it for what it was and why have you. So overall, with that said, would I go recommend it? I'd say, well, give it a one-time watch. This would be on the safe side if you're into the new trilogy. But if you are a hardcore completionist, I'd say hell yeah. But um, but if but if you are, but well. But if you, well, I would reverse that. Uh, if you are a hardcore completionist of Star Wars, I'd say between Hell Yeah and give it a one time watch. Yeah, that would be the thing. That would be the thing to do. So, anyway, yeah. I gotta tell you, this is. This really shocked me when it had, um, was in the Ryan section. The Fan Miss ends up being the first Star Wars movie to ever be in that saying. This be, this comes right ahead of it. Uh, but to heck with what those guys say, okay? Now, last year, Kathleen Kennedy, who worked on the film, indicated that Lucasfilm creatives have been had been having conversations regarding the future of the sequel trilogy's characters. So who knows when we'll see him again? We don't know. But Kathleen Kennedy was one of the producers on the film. So anyway, I'm gonna say that I thought Rise of Skywalker wasn't too bad, but I understand it has its issues and what have you. But that's all I'm gonna tell you, alright? Enough said. So, what are your thoughts on The Rise of Skywalker? You can tell me in the comment section below. If you like this video, click the like button, subscribe to my channel, and be a part of the Big D Nation. And stay tuned, my next Saturday morning TV log will be coming up, and it will be the Roman Holidays from 1972. And I'll have another movie review coming up soon. Unfortunately, due to, well, personal issues, I will... I may not guarantee you, again, like I said in my, um, my schedule video, I can't guarantee you a review of Jurassic World Dominion. If I can see it another time, we'll see, but let's try not to get too ahead. I know that film's sorry, okay with the reviews, but I've heard it's been getting more dissing like crazy. Uh, I'm just saying the hell with it. But anyway, but don't, but don't hate me for that, okay? I'm just saying. All right, but thank you for watching this, and if you like this, consider checking out my reviews for some of these other films. In the upper left-hand corner is the spoiler-free review I did for Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. In the upper right-hand corner is my review of a Marvel film that really got, well, a lot of dissing and what have you being the first to be Ryan, what have you, and that was Eternals from last year. Or if you would like another film that really got this big time, go to the bottom left-hand corner and see 
my spoiler-free review of the recent chick spy flick, The 355, which came out earlier this year. And the bottom right hand corner is a button you can click to subscribe. If you like rankings and reviews on movies, TV, music, video games, etc., then I'm your guy. Thanks for watching. Until next time, I'm the Big D saying, see ya, and may the Force be with you. Bye now.